So we'd like to introduce the uh, concept of convolution now, which is a foundational signal processing operation uh, as it has been, uh, you know, for many decades now been uh, used to study uh, and enable the study of linear time invariant systems uh, by giving, if you like, first a definition of what we call uh, an impulse response. So the, uh, let's assume that we have a linear time invariant system. This linear time invariant system is going to uh, be triggered uh, by an impulse. And that impulse is going to be represented in uh, with uh, uh, just uh, a 1 over here and all other values being 0. And really the axis here uh, is... Um, uh, effectively, uh, we, we can actually call it uh, with uh, delta of n, and this is the n axis, this is basically a digital time or discrete time samples. So, only in one sample right here at zero, uh, there is, if you like, uh, uh, an input signal, um, and this input signal goes through the linear time invariant system, and uh, at the output, we observe to actually get what we actually uh, are going to be calling uh, some form of impulse response. So uh, some form of response that we will be calling impulse response because we are triggering it with uh, the specific impulse here. So maybe that uh, uh, system is uh, going to result into some response. It uh, could be anything. And uh, I think the impulse response over here is going to be uh, very important for us because uh, for any study of any system because it will be able to with it to understand uh, a lot of the parameters and properties if you like of this uh, time uh, linear time uh, invariant system so we will use the impulse response now to actually introduce the uh, operation of convolution in this one dimensional uh, time domain if you like uh, fashion first and then we will introduce uh, with uh, in the convolutional neural networks we will introduce a two dimensional kind of equivalent we are so we are actually going now to uh, have a specific uh, input signal uh, and that input signal uh, we will call it x of n And uh, we are going also to have a system that has an impulse response uh, system that has an impulse response h of n. And uh, let's kind of uh, draw them over here so that this is basically the x of n. So it will be at uh, over here, it will be 1. Uh, over here it will be, uh, maybe I can make it a bit smaller because we have some one of the larger numbers to make a point. So this is uh, 1. And over here we have a 2. Uh, and finally we have 3. And this is basically x of n. And also, we also have a minus 1 at 4. Okay, so that's x of n. And then we uh, this x of n is going to go through this system uh, that we will call LTI, Linear Time Invariant System, that has an impulse response. This system has an impulse response. Uh, I will write it here. First of all, the uh, the, the, it's going to, uh, this x of n is going to come in, y of n is going to come out, but the LTI, uh, which is a system of interest here, has an h of n, which I will draw it here, and uh, this impact response has 1, over here it has uh, 1, a bit longer since I drew the one like this. 
minus 1. And over here it has 2. Okay, so this is h of n. And this is n. And uh, what we are asked to do is to calculate um, y of n from first principles. So actually um, using effectively the principle of inverse response what we have if you like a response uh, and then this response was uh, causing an output uh, the output of the, um, of the LTI system and what we call the, an impulse response effectively we can use exactly the same uh, concept as before and for each of these in input uh, impulses that the system will actually see and uh, we can actually calculate what would actually be uh, the output for each of those um, uh, one after the other and as will turn out um, the uh, final uh, y of n is going to be a superposition of all the impulses, uh, impulse responses that are triggered by these impulses of the input signal. All right, so here we are. Um, we can start drawing. Uh, the first impulse is arriving. Okay, so that's basically at, uh, uh, this can be, it is at minus one. And we have a value of uh, one. And uh, this is effectively uh, the input and it will actually go through the system and uh, we will uh, have at the output some response which is let's see what it will actually be first of all it starts at minus one at index minus one and it's uh, actually equivalent to this one by shifted by uh, in time by uh, by a minus one so it is um, going to be exactly identical uh, to the impulse response system of the system by shifted by minus one. So it's going to be uh, over here. It's going to be the one. Uh, over here is going to be minus one, and over here is going to be at one. It's going to be uh, two. And uh, this is going to be the output. And similarly, uh, we can actually get, uh, let's assume, again, the same system is going to be now be uh, uh, hit with this impulse, 2. Uh, and then uh, so after, after this impulse, this, this system will be hit with this impulse, that uh, this one at uh, 0 over here, and is going to be is going to be uh, creating a version of the impulse response, uh, of course, scaled uh, by the uh, amplitude of this impulse over here. So, uh, so the only impulse now that hits the system is this one. And uh, the output, if I just uh, draw the output over here, uh, this one, it will be uh, at 2. Uh, then it will be minus 2 and will be 2 times minus uh, 2, uh, sorry, two. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. Okay, so here we are. Uh, maybe um, here is going to be 4. Okay, so that is the output of the system. In fact, uh, I may need to draw it exactly uh, below the other one and keep, if you like, some notion of time here uh, because I may, uh, I want to make a point so the first one is going to be uh, 2 then the uh, over here will be minus 2 and over here it will be 4 All right, so if I repeat the same thing for all other uh, two impulses, I don't want to do that necessarily right now, but uh, I guess you can understand that each of these other ones will also create scaled versions of this. Uh, I will have at the end of the day in the output 
the output y of n will consist of uh, effectively four components. That's component number one, uh, responsible for uh, that came um, was produced out of this impulse. Component component number two was produced out of this impulse. Three and four and so on. So I will effectively have a superposition uh, and I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to have effectively a superposition which is going to be effectively an addition operation or I would call it a summation operation. So all these signals will be added and uh, uh, effectively uh, to, to create, if you like, the y of n uh, at the output. So y of n is going to be the summation over all of these components. So if you do the uh, calculations at the end of the day, uh, then I'm going to get uh, something that will actually look as a final y of n. It will look uh, it will probably look something like that. If you do the calculation, it will be, this is now y of n over n. So over here, I'm going to have a minus, uh, sorry, a 1 at minus 1. I'm going to have also a 1 at 0. Uh, over here, I'm going to have a 3. Uh, I'm going to have uh, 0, uh, I'm at 3 I'm going to have a 7, uh, and uh, at 4 I'm going to have a minus 2. So that would actually be my final y of n, and uh, this y of n is uh, this sum uh, we will call it a convolution sum. And the formula for the convolution sum will actually be uh, the formula that is known as the convolution operation from, let's say, uh, m is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. Uh, x of m times h of n minus m. So that is the explanation of how convolution uh, is effectively defined uh, from uh, uh, effectively reaching this uh, this formula from the, which results effectively from the superposition of all these components. Each of these components were actually formed from uh, each of the impulses uh, that the input signal consists of.